like that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it'll turn out good. Right, so today is a little bit of a different video because I'm going to be DIYing my very own office desk. This is something I've been meaning to do for a really, really long time, so I'm super excited and finally getting around to it. I've had a super lazy weekend, so I'm finally kicking my butt into gear and doing something productive today. So basically what I'm going to be doing today is using a piece of wood that I have got from an old wardrobe. I'm going to be sanding it down, staining it with wood, and then drilling in some legs. So to begin with, if you're wanting to do this, um, you're going to want to get a piece of wood. And I really highly recommend that you recycle a piece of wood because that's the whole purpose of this DIY is to recycle, reuse, upcycle, all those things so that you can make furniture in your own home that is created from unwanted uh, pieces of furniture elsewhere. So I got this piece of wood from an old wardrobe that was in the office that I, uh, I work at and they were getting rid of this wardrobe and I just took one of the doors of the wardrobe because they dismantled it and I simply cut that piece of wood into the size that I wanted. I cut that piece of wood with a scroll saw with the help of my dad because he knows how to use it and he just so happened to have one. Yeah, this is gonna be in the form of a daily vlog. We're gonna see how it goes. I haven't like pre-prepared this video. I'm not gonna be like doing it in a beautiful tutorial style way. I'm literally just gonna show you and take you along with me as I make this, this desk and Hopefully it inspires some of you to do the same. If any of you plan on doing this too, let me know because I think this is a super easy way of making your own desk at home and, or even just a table. It doesn't even need to be a desk. This could be a dining room table as well. Let's go outside finally, after all that talking. Let's go outside and get straight into making the desk. <laughs> So here is the piece of wood. Um, as you can see here is where we chopped it. But as you can see, this is kind of like a, just a blah color. It's a bit orangey, it's a bit yellow. I don't really like that sort of tone. First things first is to sand it. Just a disclaimer, if you're under 18 or if you're young or unsure of doing anything like this, don't watch this video and think to do it on your own. Like I'm doing this with my dad. I'm 24, but I'm doing this with my dad because it's obviously a sander, like an electric sander is quite a dangerous thing. So if you're young, don't go using an electric sander on your own. Yeah, and you should use a mask as well. We didn't have any masks, but if you have them or if you have access to buy them, go get, get some masks because it does get very dusty. But um, I'd recommend if you've never used it before, do it with someone who has. It does feel quite heavy and like, ooh, the whole time. So definitely don't just whack the sander out and do it on your own. So I've got my dad here to help me because he knows more about this than I do. But I've basically got this sander it's just like a Black & Decker sander. I think that you can get these like anywhere, like at B&Q or home base and stuff. Yeah, I think this was like 50 quid. So you can either get one if you think you're gonna do more DIYs in the future or see if someone you know has one you can borrow. But uh, my dad is recommending that I use some ear defenders because apparently it's very loud. And yeah, I'm gonna put you down here whilst I sand the top and put you on a time-lapse. <laughs> And now my camera is covered in dust. <laughs> but yeah, that was surprisingly easy. And now I've got a nice rough surface to paint on. But yeah, that was the hardest bit over. Now it's literally just painting it and then screwing the legs on. So this is a super easy, 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 easy. I think it's literally, it's literally a three step DIY desk. So it's super, super simple. So the next step is to get your wood dye. Um, I've chosen Antique Pine and that's the brand. I just got it from my local shop that sells this type of thing. And the next thing you'll need is a cloth to put it on with. And it's not going to absorb great. If you have actual wood, it'll be much better because this isn't um, wood, this is like laminate. So we'll see how it absorbs, but hopefully it'll turn out good. As you can see, the colour hasn't changed that dramatically. It's MDF basically. So really try and get some solid wood because that will look so much better. But this is what I have. 
and I just thought I'd try doing, um, you know, like a wood stain on it and see how it goes. So this is how it's looking. It's not looking dramatically different and it's picking up the colour um, in certain areas and then not in others. Leaving it to dry now, this layer, and um, then I'm gonna do a second coat and build it up and see if it gets darker. <laughs> Okay, so that coat really helped. I um, don't know if it's really showing up in that, this light, but that made it a lot darker. So yeah, I'm happy with that. It's, it is picking up this mark, but I feel like maybe as it builds, that will just add to the character of the wood. Not that it's wood, but it gives the effect that it's wood. So I'm happy with that, actually. I'm gonna keep on doing this. It doesn't take very long to dry in between. It only takes like five, 10 minutes. So I'm gonna continue building it and building it and building it. So do this if you have MDF. If you're using real wood, look on the instructions because the instructions on the back of this wood stain say to only put one or two layers, especially if it's hardwood, only do one layer because it will absorb. So yeah, just kind of use your own instinct on that. Um, but if you're using MDF or you know anything similar, then try this out. So I've decided to bring it outside and I think it will dry a lot quicker in between uh, coats if it's out in the sun. Thankfully it's been a really really sunny day so it's made it a lot easier for me to be able to do this outside and it's helped the wood stain to dry and this is what it looks like and I think that's looking really good. Um, so if you look here, here's a comparison of what the wood like was before and what it looks like now I've stained it. I had to do quite a few coats and I did have a moment where it all went a bit wrong because I put a coat on top of a coat and it didn't dry and it wiped the varnish off and you can kind of still see it. But I did another coat and I think that it looks really rustic and lovely. Yeah, you can kind of see it down here. But I think that it kind of adds to the effect and it looks great. And now we're gonna put the legs on. So first thing you wanna do before doing the legs and screwing anything in is to mark out where the holes are. So whatever legs you have, they should have some holes in them and you wanna draw little circles to mark out where you're gonna drill. The next thing you're going to want to do is use a drill to then drill some pilot holes because you don't want to just screw straight into the desk because it might be a bit tricky. Um, you want to create some holes there for the screws to go through. And then finally you're going to want to use an electric screwdriver or a normal screwdriver to screw the holes in and screw the legs in. You might have just seen there that I was having a few problems with my electric screwdriver and I just switched over to a, just a normal screwdriver just to finish it off because I think it's low on battery. So I'm just gonna mark out all the other legs whilst my um, electric screwdriver is charging and then repeat the process over again. Right, so here they are all screwed in looking very cool and now we've got to take it outside and have a look what it looks like turned over. So there we have it in situ. I'm not 100% certain if I'm gonna have it against this wall or against this wall just yet, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. I am absolutely over the moon with it, especially because it kind of matches the floor. So it's a real extension of the floor and I love it against the white wall. It's just, I just think it's so expensive looking and this cost me literally 20 pounds. So. I think it was about 18 pounds for the legs. And then the die for the top of the wood was three pounds. So that's, you know, I was looking at these on eBay for 150 pounds and you see these in shops and places all over for so, so much money. So thank you for watching today's video. I hope this showed what a little bit of creativity, perseverance and imagination can do. And I highly, highly recommend that you do this with other things in your house, other pieces of furniture, think outside the box because buying something new isn't necessarily the best thing to do, all that rhymed. 
Um, it's really great and a really fun thing to do actually to make your own pieces of furniture and to DIY stuff because it gives you that sense of accomplishment, it makes you love the piece of furniture even more. I just think you come up with something that is so much more beautiful than going to your local shop like Ikea or Argos and buying a ready-made desk that a hundred and one other people have. I'm so happy with the result. I've just put a few bits and pieces on it just to have a look at what it would look like. There, Alex's silly little figurines, my lamp and the monitor and I just think it just is amazing. It's so, so beautiful in comparison to other desks that I would have been able to afford and yeah, it's just something that I'm gonna keep forever and I'm gonna love and it's gonna be something that's gonna be really easy to store because you can just unscrew the legs and put it away. So let me know if you plan on doing something similar. You could do the same principle with a bedside table, with a dining room table, with a desk. You could do it with anything, like buying those legs with a coffee table, because I know that you can buy these legs in different lengths. Yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to me making over this whole room in the next few days. I'll see you in the next one, bye. And that's the reason I started a YouTube channel, because I wanted more people to go vegan so that there was less animal cruelty happening. And not to mention the fact that the world is in the shittest state imaginable.